guys, welcome to this next video. We're going to look at problem 423 um, in the 14th edition. Four, 423 in the 14th edition. It is 421, 421 in the 13th edition. Okay? So what do we have here? We have this um, lever here with this ball at the end, and we have a, a force. It's being applied at some angle to the horizontal, this theta. Okay, it says here, if the force F equals 100 Newton, okay? So, it's given. We know what the magnitude of the force is. We just don't know what the direction is. If the force F equals 100 Newton, determine the angle theta, okay? That angle theta, so that the force develops a clockwise moment, about 0.0 of 20 Newton meter. Okay? So, we... They've given us the answer. They've said to us, we know what the resultant moment is due to this force. It's 20 Newton meter clockwise. That's the resultant moment. Based on that information, what is the what should the angle be? Okay? So I've done here a very beautiful drawing of that problem. Okay? Problem 423 in the 14th edition. So, what we've got here, the dimensions that this, this longish part is 300 millimeters long, this vertical part is 50 millimeters, there's an angle here of 60 degrees. Let me just go back here so that we can see it properly if you want to draw it for yourself. Okay? So, look at the 300 millimeters, the 50 millimeters, the 60 degrees, the 60 degree angle. Okay, so now what they're saying is that the resultant moment equals 20 Newton meter clockwise, right? And if we take, if we take anti-clockwise as positive, based on the right-hand rule, then, then the resultant moment is... Minus, okay, minus 20 Newton meter means even if you just look at it, guys, if you look at it and you extend the line of action here, you can see that this force wants to cause a clockwise moment, so it kind of matches up, okay. So, what they're saying is that um, this force causes a clockwise moment, but what we need to try to find is this angle there. Okay, what is that angle there so that the resultant moment is 20 Newton meter? Okay, so just as I drew this figure now, the, the first thing always which we're trying to do is we're trying to find the moment arm of that force, right? If we extend this line of action, then that is the moment arm. But as I can see, it's, it's pretty much impossible. It might be possible. No, I don't think it's possible to find this D this is your your moment arm. If you can, you've got F. If you can find the D, you've basically pretty much almost solved your problem. The problem is you can't find that D, so we need to use the principle of moments. Okay, we need to use the principle of moments. That this is um, chapter four problem. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. Okay, this is a chapter. Idea. Okay, just bear with me. Chapter 4.4. Okay? Sorry, this is not a very high-tech studio I'm running over here in my office. Okay? So, so essentially, what we do is, the principle of moment states that the, the, the moment due to this force is equal to the sum of the moments of each component. So I need to break up this force into its x and y, and then I need to determine the moments due to those two components. Okay? So, if we break up this force here, we have an fx, fy. But what is fx and fy? Let's write it down here. My fx will be f cos theta, right? 
and my Fy will be F sine theta. Very straightforward. Okay? By the way, we know what F is. It's equal to 100. Okay? So now, what we want is, <clears throat> we want to determine <clears throat> the moments due to each of those components. So in order to determine the moment, we need to calculate the moment arm. So if you look at Fx, for example, if we draw our extend our, mo our line of action of that force, this distance here, there's our perpendicular distance. We need to determine what that distance is to, to calculate the moment due to that force Fx. So can you see that the vertical distance here will be equal to 50 millimeters plus this vertical distance, okay? Sorry, it should actually, um, I should actually draw it to there. So it should be 50 millimeters plus this component here, which will be 300 sine 60, right? So we need to add this vertical component to the vertical component here, which is 300, there's the angle, sine 60, okay? So this distance here, I'm going to put it back into meters, is 0 0.05, which is the 50 millimeters, plus 0 0,3 meters, which is the 300, sine 60. So that distance there, which is the moment on for the, the, to calculate the moment due to Fx, is the 50 millimeters plus 300 sine 60. So that's what we get there. Then we've got Fy, the vertical component of this force. We need to determine its moment arm. Well, if we draw a line straight down like this, that then is the moment arm. That, that length there, there, right? That length there is the moment arm. This, which is then 0, 0,3 cos 60. Alright, so now we've got our moment arm, we've got our both moment arms, so now we say, let's make sure you can see this, our resultant moment is equal to the sum of all the moments of the components, okay? So what is the resultant moment? It is and we are taking anti-clockwise as positive. It is minus 20 newton meter, right, which we got from here. Okay. Is then equal to the moment due to the Fx. So we've got Fx, which is, which is F cos theta, times this moment on. Okay. So it is F cos theta that's the that's the force now we need our moment arm which is 0 0,05 plus 0 0,3 sine 60 now I want to ask you does that cause a clockwise or an anti-clockwise moment again bring the force along the line of action put it there Right, and there's the point of rotation. So can you see, if you had some beam here and you applied a beam, it would cause it to want to rotate like that, right? So this force is going to cause a clockwise rotation, meaning we have to make this negative. That has to become negative because it is a clockwise moment. What about the other one? We have Fy times this. So Fy, by the way, what I want to say is, first put in the magnitude of your force and then the moment on, and then afterwards decide whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, okay? So then we have to include our F sine theta times the moment on, which is 0, 0,3 cos of 60. Is that a positive? Does that give you a positive, this Fy, does it give you a positive or a negative moment? Or rather, 
a clockwise or an anti-clockwise moment well if you take that force and bring it down along its line of action and you apply it here and you attach a beam like this can you see that it wants to push the beam in an anti-clockwise fashion in rotation so this would then be positive okay so there's your equation if we know f is that's 100 so we know what that is so if we want to re rewrite this again it's minus 20 I'm just going to rewrite it and simplify it quite significantly this ends up becoming 15 sine theta minus 30 comma 98 cos theta that is your equation now um, how do you solve for this angle now this angle theta well if this was zero on, on this side um, you know it might have simplified things because then you could go sine theta divided by cos theta is tan theta and then you can solve it but the problem is we don't have a zero on the side we have a minus 20 so we have to perhaps figure out another way of solving this so one way is just to do it iteratively okay we I've shown I've shown this to you in a previous video an iterative solution let's say let's guess what our angle theta is and what our answer is well we don't guess what our answer is we guess what our angle theta is and we calculate our answer and we essentially see if this answer how close this answer is to minus 20 so if I let's let's start off with say an angle of 45 degrees let's start off with an angle of 45 degrees and I plug that into there right we're, we're guessing now guys we're guessing if I put in an angle of 45 degrees into there um, I believe I think so I did this recently I think I should get a minus 11.3 degrees is that the same as that no so what we're doing is we've got a left hand solution here right what we're doing is we're putting in 45 degrees into the right hand side and we're seeing if the right hand side equals the left hand side so if I put in 45 into there I get minus 11 comma 3 so I'm not sure how uh, which direction to go how about I try 50 degrees let's see what will happen if I put in 50 degrees well if I put in 50 degrees I get minus 8 comma 4 degrees so can you see I'm moving further away from the minus 20 okay I, I want to be moving towards minus 20 but as I increase the angle I'm moving away from minus 20 so how about we try 30 okay because I need I need to s see if I can move closer to that if I put in 30 into there I end up with minus 19 comma 32 degrees so can you see that's that's almost spot on so I can see that my angle is very close to 30 degrees what if I make it 28 let's just let's make it 29 let's let's see I, I can see I'm very close now so let's make it 29 I put in 29 sine 29 times 15 minus 3,98 times sine sorry times cos of 29 I get minus 19 comma 82 what about 28 15 times sine of 28 minus 30 comma 98 cos of 28 gives me minus 20 comma 31 so can you see the answer is then between 29 and 28 and um, the answer ends up being if you do this the answer ends up being theta equals to 28 comma 6 degrees okay so this is a bit of an iterative uh, uh, problem you have to iterate the solution but don't don't miss the um, the mechanics side of it where you had to first break it up into its x and y get the get the moment arms for each force 
um, set up the direction which is positive. We chose clockwise, the right hand rule, and we set up our governing equation, the resultant moment, which was minus 20, is equal to the sum of all the moments of the components. And we ended up with this final equation and we iterated to find the solution. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Cheers.